the uh, keynote speaker this year is uh, acting Chief Justice of the Kansas Supreme Court, Lawton Nuss. In 1969, although it was in Lawrence, he was sitting in the exact same position you guys are sitting in today. Who's all here from Salina? Acting Chief Justice Nuss is a graduate of Salina High School, and he was a Boy Stater in 1969. So, Without any further ado, if you would all give a round, a great round of applause for our keynote speaker, Chief Justice, Acting Chief Justice Lawton Nuss. Good afternoon. That was pathetic. When I was in Boy State in 1969 at KU, as Mr. Gardner said, we were in an auditorium a lot like this. And whenever in those days a speaker told us good morning or good afternoon, we roared back at them. We roared. When the great heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali would get hit hard by an opponent, he would ask them, is that all you got? Is that all you got? Well, I want to see, is that all you got? So we're going to try this again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You got it. Now, we all realize that we're not here for a cheerleaders camp. So we're not going to spend all afternoon learning how to yell together. So what are we going to do for the next 10 minutes? I'm going to talk to you about a former president of the United States who gave a speech that some of you may have read about, who talked about the importance of trying, the importance of getting involved. And these are his words. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled, nor where the doers of deeds could have done them better. No, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by the dust and the sweat and the blood, who strives valiantly who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Those words hung on the office wall of one of my fellow Marine Corps officers 35 years ago. They were actually spoken more than 100 years ago by the 26th President of the United States. Anybody here know who that was? Yes, sir. Teddy Roosevelt. Exactly, Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt did not just speak pretty words. He lived his words. Roosevelt was a colonel in the Spanish-American War in 1898, and for his actions on the battlefield, he was later awarded the Medal of Honor. As you know, that is the highest award that this country can award for bravery on the battlefield. To my knowledge, Theodore Roosevelt is the only president in our history who has ever earned that prestigious award. And lest you think that Roosevelt was only successful in war, I should point out that he was equally successful in peace. In 1905, he negotiated a peace between Russia and Japan, bringing an end to a war between those two countries. And for his diplomacy, he was awarded 
the Nobel Peace Prize. As you know, this prize is universally recognized as the highest award for peace that the world has to offer. And although at least two other American presidents have been so honored, Theodore Roosevelt was the first. So in seven years, Roosevelt performed feats on opposite ends of the continuum, in peace and in war. And he received for his efforts the highest national and international awards that can be bestowed. I think you'll agree, that's not too bad for one man's life, but there's more. Roosevelt was the president who forced the building of the Panama Canal. That is the man-made work that allowed ships to pass through Central America instead of having to travel around the southern tip of South America, thousands of miles out of their way thus joining for the first time in world history the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. Roosevelt was also a conservationist as well as a naturalist. As president, he set aside more than 230 million acres of wild America. He created or enlarged 150 national forests. He created 55 federal bird preservations and national game preserves. He created 24 national parks and monuments, areas that we enjoy today as the Sundance National Forest in Wyoming, the Grand Canyon National Monument in Arizona, and the Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. All of these efforts led Roosevelt to be called the wilderness warrior. Not a bad life work, but there's more. After Roosevelt was president, he was a co-leader of an expedition to South America. The expedition explored an uncharted river called the River of Doubt, because nobody knew what was on that river. The two-month trip by dugout canoe nearly killed him but the expedition yielded 1,500 bird specimens and over 500 animal specimens for the United States History, excuse me, Museum of Natural History. This 1,000 mile long river, which is as long as the Rhine River in Germany, is now called the Rio Teodoro, the River Theodore. 